despertado bien empoderado mis artesitas en mi ajuar con mi banquito curandero. In our shamanic ways of uh, the world, uh, the realm of spirit is a tangible uh, expression of the divinity that is inherent in creation. And hence, our life is one of always offering gratitude or a recognition of that which is uh, beyond the phenomenal world, beyond this sensorial perception we call life. And that is what the motivation behind this, the writing of this book has been in the first place. Those who are familiar with my work have already known a little bit of my story, yet because of the bequeath, an oath I took to do a transmission of these wisdom teachings and practices through ritual enactment as well as orally, till this moment uh, I had not been uh, freed to put it into the written word. And the reason for that is because my primary mentor, Don Celso Rojas Palomino, from Salas, or was born originally in Huancabama, then moved to Salas when he was 13 years old or 16 years old, uh, was concerned that if we made these teachings into word, into written word, they would become, they would lose their vitality, they would lose their power, and they would lose their evolutionary gift which is to initiate, elicit, transformation, and change in people and any expression of the natural world that is blocked in its life force, that feels hindered in its chi, in its kausai, in its love. For this is a path of love. All true healing is a labor of love. When done with purity of motive, and clarity of intention, and an open heart, it will always be a restorative salve for the distress of an individual, a community, or our planet as a whole. So, Lessons in Courage is about certain pivotal moments in my own struggle with surrender, with acceptance that there was a wisdom far greater than myself orchestrating my life way as a passerby. It's about reaching a visceral awareness of the blessing of perfection in each moment and learning how to engage whatever experience or situation that I was confronting with respect and even those most darkest moments of my life, learn to be grateful for them, learn to use them as an opportunity to cross over, to let go progressively more of that good old ego mind, of that inherent craving for control and approval that is so characteristic of our modern approach to living. The need to be approved of by an external source or an external reality, or the need to control that external reality in hope that we can have a more comforting, more 
effortless, more harmonious life is really at the core of the pollution of mind that is even more devastating than the pollution of environment. So this book is about offering whatever wisdom and wherewithal I may have gleaned over the many moons of my apprenticeship as well as my service to others in the world. Aspirants is a great work with practices, exercises, and stories that hopefully can serve as a foundation for a transformation of that polluted mind, for a moving from head to heart. And as you know, and some of you would consider this a cliche, the famous Hopi, uh, excuse me, Lakota, uh, saying that the longest path you'll ever walk is from here to here. There's another piece to this, that the return journey from the heart to the mind is equally as important, if not more. For you can be a total heart-centered emissary of the divine expression of all that is and be a recluse and isolate yourself and choose a path of asceticism and denial and aspire only to that which awaits you in the afterlife. Yet, where's your medicine? Yes, salvation of one's individual soul is a noble aspiration, yet it also denies the interdependent essence, not only of the natural world, but behind the dreaming of creator-creatrix itself. It's all about relationship. It's all about network, community, and unification with a common purpose of living with heart gently and softly in our thoughts, words, and actions upon this good earth. It is my deep honor to welcome you all to Books and Books. I appreciate very much your showing up. And I had a couple of options in terms of how to spend our time together. This is the first book I've written. And to go back to what I started off saying in terms of my initial reticence of writing it because of concern that it would make static something that is an organically unfolding process that is a, a mirror of life, uh, I realized that it could be done if it was my personal journey and not a disclosure of the many medicine <coughs> practices or the foundation of the Kamaska tradition or the Pakokuna tradition of the northern coast and southeastern highland area of Peru, respectively speaking, that Don Celso and Don Benito were so concerned that by putting into print would commercialize it as if it wasn't enough that people are already metanizados. So it's been an interesting dance. It's been a walking between worlds. It's been a, a deepening of what my purpose is here on this earth. In essence, I'm hoping that whatever stories you find in there, whatever wisdom teachings and practical applications of the tradition of the Pachacuti Mesa, that was originated for the Western acculturated aspirant of the shamanic arts, that it will serve you to move from despair to hope, from fear to love, and separation to wholeness. Words can be extremely powerful 
when used with beauty, grace, and loving intention.